Welcome everyone. We are sorry we're a bit late. We're doing some last minute technicals, some checks in here, trying to learn some new technology, but then we've learned something. And so we're back with Dr. Dyer today, Dr. David. Everybody, for some of you that were here with us last week, thank you so much for joining back. Uh, we really appreciate it. I can't call all your names here, but I can see all of you. Thank you for coming. So Dr. David is a medical doctor and health wellness thought leader. His organization, the Brain and Body Foundation, works with the federal government to address brain disorders in Nigeria. He has over a decade of experience providing therapies for children with autism and other neurological disorders. Um, so I won't say more than this. Uh, Dr. David is going to take it away from here. And our topic for today is, Dr. David, I wish I could remember, but I don't know something about bugs, brains, and something. But then it's the, the I, I think the topic doesn't matter, but the justice you'll do to it. So let's take it on. Nice, thank nice, nice. Back. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Asma, for, for having me on again. Um, it means I didn't do too bad. Uh, too bad a job for the first time, so thanks. Thankfully, we shall continue with the yeah, you did an awesome, job. awesome job. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, and good morning to or good day to everybody out there. It's about just about eight o'clock in the morning for me, which is really really early. So if I'm slurring my words, please forgive me. It's uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things. So uh, the title of the show, of the, the today is. What we're going to be talking about is bugs, brains, and behavior. And I will show you, I'll start sharing my slides very soon. But and that's one of the things we were trying to do. We wanted, wanted to try and get the recording so that the slides and the, and the viewer can be seen clearly. I don't know what it is with Zoom, or why they haven't done this since, that once they show the slides or share the screen, the picture or the video of the person becomes very, 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 very small. And so we're, we're hoping that with this. I guess it's right. due to preference. Some people don't read that, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, we'll hope this recording will be better. Yeah. Um, so last week, last week, I'm just gonna do a quick recap. Last week we talked about the, the gut being the very important to health and to the brain and to, the, this, and to brain disorders. Today, when I said last week, I mean two weeks ago, Today, we're going to really hone in on what aspect of gut health is important. So let me just go ahead. I think I'll just go ahead and start sharing the screen so we can, we can get right into it. Uh, i do this now. Excuse me just a minute. And please feel free to uh, send in your questions, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so that's our slide. And for those of you just joining, as Asma said, I'm the uh, founder and director of the Brain and Body Foundation, and we do a lot of stuff with children. So autism, but we also do um, seizures, Down syndrome, any genetic condition. We've already also included sickle cell disease. And quite frankly, what we found out is that it is not that complicated if you deal with the basics. The basics are always not complicated. It's just that we tend to uh, specialists and doctors to look at the minutia, to look at the tiny, tiny details, rather than looking at the basic things that are common to, all, common to all. And I think one of the advantages we have in Nigeria is that we don't have access to all this great super duper technology and, and diagnostic tests. So we were forced to think in terms of the basics, what is common, what are the things that we can address. And I got to tell you that I'm excited that, uh, with what we're finding, because what we're finding is showing us that, that you can actually make a huge, huge, huge difference without the super duper technology. And now it's better to have the technology and the expertise and the facilities and all that. But in the absence of that, it simply means that we are not left without help. And that is what we're finding out. And the, what I will be talking about in the next few minutes is, is key to that. So I want to make this point first and foremost. If any child, even an adult, is having a, an issue with behavior or mood or even cognition to, certain, to a certain degree, most times, almost, almost without exception, almost without exception, I can't think of any exceptions, but most without exception, you will find that there's, some, there's something going on with the, 
there are either too many bugs of a certain kind of bug or microbe or fungi or bacteria or virus, or there's too little. And usually it's a combination of the two. And the term, the medical term, which you don't need to remember, is called dysbiosis, disordered balance of the bacteria and the bugs, in the, in the, in, especially in the, in the gut. As you all know by this time, or should know, every human being has a large amount of bacteria and other organisms living in their guts. And this, these bacteria influence, to a very large degree, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, and our behaviors. Believe it or not, there's a lot of research going on now. I mean, I, I would not have believed it before, but with the research and with our work at the foundation, we have seen it simply by manipulating the levels of certain bugs, certain kinds of bacteria, we found out that it can play a huge, huge role in the recovery or, or otherwise of the child. So this is um, an outline of what we'll be talking about. Uh, we're gonna recap, remember some of the things that we've talked about and we'll, we'll build upon it. We're gonna be talking about microbes. We're gonna be talking about a special approach, which in my opinion has, seems to have been the most effective approach to treating autism. They've done a study about a few years ago, 2018, I think. And it was just a one time, I'll, I'll describe it later on, but it was just a two week treatment. And two years later, they still found that the, the, the improvements are still uh, enduring. We'll talk about uh, the characteristics of a healthy microbiome. I'll tell you what a microbiome is. And then we'll talk about a few other things. Uh, so let's recap a lot. Again, remember if you, if you were on the call, the, the Zoom last, last week, two weeks, I mentioned that when we started treating or addressing these conditions under the, federal, under the supervision and endorsement of the Federal Ministry of Health, I was focused on the brain. I was like, okay, it's the brain that's a problem. Let's fix the problem. Let's fix the problem. Let's fix the brain. Let's fix the brain. So I was always getting supplements and uh, tools that will help to improve the brain. Our results were marginal at best. So it got us thinking. I kept on researching and trying to find out what the problems were. And that's when we found out that the bugs, the, sorry, the gut, the digestive system, plays a huge role in influencing brain function. And so we talked about, and this is the quote that I really I like that I mentioned last week. It's proper digestion is the great secret of life. And I remember, if you remember, I said, the most important thing you can do for your health is to have a healthy digestive system and I explained why. And I also said, yes. So in this slide that I showed you, there are seven areas that you want to address when it comes to the gut, especially with children who are on the autism spectrum. Today, we're going to be talking about number three, the composition of the microbiome. And the microbiome is the sum total of all the microorganisms that are not human that reside in your body. So you have the skin microbiome, you have the, the vaginal microbiome, you have the other microbiomes according to their location. Today, we're going to talk about the gut microbiome, which, as I said earlier, is what helps to, what to a very large extent influences brain, your brain and behavior, not just brain and behavior, but even, even weight, uh, how heavy you are, how light you are, your appetites, your preferences for different kinds of foods, believe it or not, your gut microbes play a role there. Probably in subsequent uh, talks, we're going to talk about the other aspects. Like I said, it's not just about the bacteria, the other microbes of, uh, um, as well. And these are just four of maybe probably about 10 different kinds that reside in our gut. In our gut. Viruses are one, fungi, you've all heard about candida, worms, different kinds of worms. There are parasites, there are protozoa. Malaria, for instance, is one of the it's a parasite. It's not a bacteria, it's a parasite. So let's talk about the 
FMT story. And as I mentioned before, I said there was a study that was done. This was in Arizona. What they did, they took about 20 children with autism. And what they did was that they gave them high dose antibiotics, a special kind that doesn't enter the bloodstream, it just stays in the gut. They killed off the bacteria that were in the gut. And then they had a, they gave them an enema, which means to flush out the stool and the contents of the guts. Then, and this will seem, this may gro gross you out. <laughs> this may gross you out, but just hang with me. What they now did was that they took, cleaned up feces, stool from children who were normal, typical, who didn't have autism. They took their stool, cleaned it up, left all the bacteria and the viruses in it, just removed the toxins, and they put that into the gut. Asma, have you heard, have you heard of this study before? Never. <laughs> yeah, never. It's a shocking one. It is That's shocking. It ends, though. <laughs> it is shocking. By the way, before I forget this, this is the standard treatment for a certain kind of very severe diarrheal disorder caused by a specific microbe called Clostridia, Clostridia difficile. That is a standard FDA approved treatment in this country because they found out that nothing else could work. Antibiotics, nothing, zero, nothing. They found out the only way they could treat this condition, otherwise the patient would die, is to put the stool of a normal person into the, the, the colon and the digestive, the colon, not the digestive system, but the colon specifically of these people who are suffering with this disease. And that was, and I think the results were 98% recovery as opposed to 20% if you use antibiotics. Wow. Uh, what's the name of this diarrhea um, you said? What's the name Clostridium of it? Clostridium difficile. Clostridium, uh, let's see now. Plasmodium difficile. I'll just Clostridium. Try Plasmodium as in the mosquito? No, Clostridium. Tell you what, I will. Yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to know more about it. Okay. Yeah. Is it common? Is it a common uh, condition? Is it a common disease? Is it a common disease? Uh, thankfully not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I've typed it there. Ah, okay, thank you. So they're using that same approach to, towards autism. In some cases, they used um, fecal capsules. Again, the same thing. It's exactly what you what it is, and they put them in capsules, and they put them in the and they put them by mouth. These kids took the. After, I think it was a two week treatment. After two years, they found out that the memory, the, the, the results that they got, including speech, improvement in speech, improvement in social contact, social behavior, um, and all, all the other kinds of behavior, in addition to digestive, uh, digestive concerns, cleared probably by 80%. In many cases, these kids were able to go back to school and function normally. Now, the authors of the study warn that this is still a study. It has not, there were people who claim there were many uh, problems with the study, that there were the, the sample size of 20 was too low. They should have had a wider sample size. They should have tried in other hospitals as well. So they're, they're in the middle of doing all this. But as you can see, this is something that many people or many parents will shy away from. Although I understand that some parents, maybe somebody even on the call today that I invited, um, are looking to, to, to doing this in their, um, I believe, so in some parts of Mexico and the UK, there are people that there are doctors that are doing it, but I have to warn, if anybody's thinking about it, <laughs> it, is a, you, you, it is highly, highly, highly risky. You, you need to have the right uh, person to do it. So, and we have been doing something akin to this, but it's a modified way. No, don't use feces, but I'll explain to you what we do. So let me just talk a little bit about some of the things that we're finding out just in general. Now, this is a diagram, very, very noisy, but over here, it says Parkinson's disease. They're finding out that things like Parkinson's disease, 
things like uh, um, Alzheimer's, dementia, and other diseases, they're finding out that it's because, and of course, autism is at the bottom here. They're finding out is that either it's some bugs that are, somebody decided to go haywire and they are, they are growing, they are multiplying. Certain circumstances cause that. And these bugs can produce certain metabolites and certain chemicals that trigger something in the gut, but also that same trigger is triggered in the brain. It doesn't start in the brain, they're finding out. It's starting with a dysfunction in the gut that travels to the brain and triggers the same dysfunction in the brain. Now, as you know, the brain is much more sensitive than the gut. So that's why you see the problem more in the brain. And therefore, everybody is complaining or is, is concerned and they're attacking the brain, trying to fix the brain. Many times they found out that the problem is in the gut. I cannot overemphasize that. And it has a lot to do with the microbes, the balance of the microbes. Um, right down here, I'm going to read this if you can see it. Studies in mice suggest an infection in pregnancy can set up a cascade of, of activity in the mother's guts. Certain bacteria stimulate T helper cells, part of the immune system. They produce immune molecules that travel to the fetus's brain and provoke autism-like behavior. Probably in another talk, we can talk about how what happens during pregnancy. But the bottom line is that microbes are triggered and they produce chemicals that affect the brain, either by addressing the immune system or even directly addressing the brain. I have a video, a picture here because this kind of talks about the different kind of microbes as you, as the child grows older. So at birth, they have a very restricted form of microbe, and that's the E. enterobacteria, bacteria, bacteria C. As the child grows, begins to get microbes from the mother, from the milk, from the environment, you see that it begins to multiply, it begins to multiply, it begins to multiply. And by three years, it is uh, agreed that the microbiome, the balance, the different kinds of bacteria and viruses and all that is established by the age of three. So by the age of three, henceforth, even if you have uh, 50 or so on, is really that has that thing, that balance has been established by since the age of three. Now it can be modified a little bit by food, diet, exercise, stress levels, and all those things. But the main, the main thing is established by the age of three, which brings up an interesting point. The interesting point is this that um, most kids, by the time they present with autism, by the time the parents start to notice things, it's before the age of three. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? This, in fact, in all my patients, when the parents are noticing something was going wrong, or if the child had a, the child was doing well and, and regressed, it's almost always before the age of three, maybe two and a half, two years of age. And so here's an interesting point. This yellow thing here, you can see with Prevotella, you can see that it's there, it's here. You can see that it is not anywhere else. So by the age of two to three is when it comes in. What they found out in autism, and I'm going to show you the video now, another slide, is that most children with autism are lacking in that Prevotella. It's one of the key organisms that are missing in autism. Uh, so I just have this picture here, it shows the small intestine. I mean, you know, the, the gut is a really, really large gut. It's very, very long. Uh, where the problems lie the most are in the large intestine, your colon. Ideally, you shouldn't have much bacteria in the small intestine. When the large intestine is, this is where the action happens. So there are all kinds of bacteria, all kinds of organisms acting and reacting fighting amongst themselves, um, producing chemicals, 
dealing with chemicals. So it's, it's, it's really a battlefield between the good and the bad. And I say good in, 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 in quotation marks because sometimes the good can do bad things. So it's a question of how well the guts, bugs behave amongst themselves. Um, so let's see the bugs that are in overabundance, what they are finding out. And this is, uh, this is also just points at our, our approach. Clostridia, I've mentioned that already. Clostridia difficile, it produces a toxin which causes autism-like symptoms. We also know that candida, these two, the Clostridia and candida, both start with C. Candida, I've, I've one, of, one of my mentors said that almost 99% of all children with autism have a, an overload of candida. That's not even a bacteria, it's more like a fungi, fungi. They seem, these are what they call opportunistic organisms. They tend to grow when there's a defect in the immune system or there's a defect in the, the body for whatever reason, whether it's genetic or there's stress or there's a chemical attack, a heavy metal overload. There are different things that can trigger autism. And we'll probably talk about that in, in subsequent talks. But the key thing is that there's an imbalance and there are certain key culprits that are always, always in abundance. I mentioned Clostridia, the Candida. But, um, some women too really experience a lot of cand candidiasis, um, some gut problems in people who don't have autism, their digestive system not. Candida is a big, big, big problem in many cases. Here are some other less popular um, bugs, but they've, they're just, they're now just beginning to study them and they're beginning to see, okay, there are patterns, uh, more of this, less of the other. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. So I've talked about the FMT story. Now, this is where the action is, and as far as I'm concerned. I mentioned Prevotella, that's absent or very, very low levels. They found that Prevotella helps in the digestion of certain kinds of foods like carbohydrates. If you notice, children with autism are very sensitive to sugar. You give them some sugar and they go, or hey, well, they, they become hyperactive, but they tend to like uh, starchy foods, foods that have a lot of sugar. It's bad for them, it makes them worse, but you notice that they have a craving for it. It's not necessarily they that have that craving. And I know this is hard for you to understand or to accept. It was hard for me as a doctor to accept initially. But the craving is coming from the bugs. As a matter of fact, you can tell. I've learned how to tell now. If I ask a parent what kinds of food did the parent and the child likes, and I hear, oh, he likes this, he likes golden morn, he likes conflicts, he likes a lot of bread like spaghetti, like indomie noodles. It tells me that there are bugs, there's specific kinds of bugs in the gut that are in the ascendancy, that they are, they are, they are overpopulating the gut. They are the ones that are craving these foods, not necessarily drink the child. They are pushing and driving the child to eat more of these foods and feed them. This is already causing me who's, you know, who's bumps because I'm actually thinking it's not just for kids on the autism spectrum because I'm seeing a lot of this, these things in my son. Um, you know, he's gone off meat, veggies, fruit, everything. It's all about, uh, like you said, pasta, rice, cornflakes, that's it. That's all he eats. So this is something I should also check it. So it's not only about kids on the autism spectrum, right? actually. It could be, it could happen to any child, right? Just that our kids are more predisposed to it, would we say? Right. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm sure other parents too can relate to this as well. So these are different kinds of bacteria. So what we started looking at what we started looking at was, that, okay, how can we, and this, uh, we started doing this even before I read about this FMT study. 
uh, FMT stands for fecal microbial transfer. Fecal, fecal in stool, microbial bugs transfer. So putting the feces of another child into another individual into your body. So like I said, we started doing it ourselves. So we found a way to help to push out safely using SIPs, nutrients and supplements only. We do not use medications at all, at all, at all, at all. We don't use it because um, many of my patients are even re remote. So I don't want to add more problems to their issue. I'm not saying drugs cause problems all the time, but there's always that risk that there's going to be some side effects. So we find a way to push the, the bad bugs out. And we also give them specific nu uh, nutrients and nutraceuticals that will kill off the bad bacteria, the fungi, the viruses, and remove them at the same time by pushing that out. And then as we're pushing that out, we start to populate with good bacteria, with good bacteria, with probiotics, with probiotics. And you have to be selective. You have to find the right kind of bacteria to push it in because like we said, uh, like I said, these are all the kind of bacteria that, that are missing. And these are just the tip of the iceberg. They found as they are developing these uh, diagnostic tools and developing these um, ability to identify which bacteria is which, that's when we begin to learn about them. Or at least we know about some of them. So the, the challenge is to find the right commercial probiotic that's of high quality and that's been shown to work. And it took me years, quite frankly, years. Many times I was traveling back and forth. And by the way, some, I think one of us, one of the guests is in Seattle. It was in Seattle that I found the answers. And once I found it, I now, well, now I began to start getting the, the, and now I started using the probiotics on my patients. And I can tell you remarkable improvements in speech, and behavior and language and on and so on and so forth. But the key is you want to address the dysbiosis by putting in, by taking out the bad and putting in the good. So like I said in our last se session, we first four to six weeks is spent on clearing and pushing out as much as the good as possible and killing the bad bugs. And then subsequent months from then on, we just, in whatever else we do, we give them the probiotics because we're looking to seed. So like you're planting a garden, so we want to get the right kind of plants and flowers or planting a field to get the right kind of uh, yields that you're looking for. So we're, we're basically seeding the gut with the right kind of microbes. But you can't just leave it at that. You also have to feed those microbes, the same thing when you're farming. You can't just leave the seeds in the, in the ground. You have to water them. You have to make sure that they're getting enough nutrients from the soil. So it has to be the right kind of soil. The same way we are looking at feed, seeding the gut and feeding the microbes that we seed the gut with. All right, so having said that, having said that, should I mention our offer, Asma? Yeah, you should, you know, because I mean, this is where what I, I think most of us are looking for. And like when I when I spoke to you the first time, what I liked about it was, I mean, first the you the analogy you used just now, you said uh, first you 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 need to like clear out the land and make it fertile, but then you need to take care of it, then you need to water it. So that was something I really resonated with because I've been to so many you know people that would professionals with all due respect to them. And one thing that actually sort of put me off was that I was given maybe sometimes at a point in time, 10 to 12 different supplements to use for my son. And this is someone I have to even teach how to start taking tablets. So how do I even start? And then they tell me they're all important. But when I spoke with you, the, what I liked about your protocol, even though we've not really started it because we, we can't have them here because of the lockdown. But I'm really looking forward to having them. What I liked about it was the fact that you will hold a parent's hands from the beginning to the end. And um, of course, through your services, it's not, nothing is free because it's one, I mean, one of the best protocols I've heard. We just spoke on phone and on Zoom, but I liked, I liked everything you said. 
but mainly because you said um, for, for, for each of the uh, stage of the protocol, you explain why you were doing it. And I think this is mostly why parents are lost. So we are told, okay, give him this, he's going to get more speech. But what was happening before the, re what was the reason why he wasn't getting more speech? And now in less than 10, 15 minutes, we've explained everything through all these microbiomes that I can hardly even pronounce, but <laughs> who am I just this guy? We want to flush them out and get something good in. So yes, please let's have the offer because I'm really looking forward to starting a protocol myself. Okay, perfect, wonderful. So it, just to say this too, that it's not just about the microbiome. I think I mentioned from the other things, um, the other slides that the gut has to be addressed, the wall, the health of the gut, the brain itself has to be addressed. So like I told, told you, we, we do go through a process, but the first starting, starting point is the gut and the microbiome for sure. So what, uh, and I've been thinking about how can we get it from the US to send to Dubai since there's a, 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 or to other parts of the world since it's a bit of a challenge um, from Nigeria, which is where most of our stock is. So what, what we, we're going to offer is that um, if you will, consultation is, for those on the call, it's half off. Uh, you have my contact details, we can we'll schedule a point, uh, a call. So if you send us an email, we'll schedule a call for you to be half off uh, what the charge is in the US, uh, what we normally charge. Then we also, many of these supplements, we, the companies that we get them from don't buy, don't make in individuals. So you can't just buy them off Amazon, for instance. They are specialized, they are specifically as, uh, paid to order. Therefore, we cannot get them with retail. So I told us mothers, if we can get enough of you, maybe, I don't know if you're all, in, I know you're not all in the same place, but we can order in bulk. If people pay in, in, in term, I would strongly recommend that you get the probiotics, you get at least 10 bottles because those probiotics, like I said, make, make, it, make a huge difference uh, and stock them. So we can buy them in bulk and then we can help to send them to, to you wherever you are in the world. We can arrange that from the US. The, the kit, the starter kit for the clearing and the gut health for the cleansing too, we can get that spot. It's about four, five different companies. We can put that together in a kit. So if you're interested, contact us. We'll let you know what that entails. And we can put them together. The, the challenge that we had uh, sending them to Asma, one of them was that Nigeria, Dubai issues. Apparently, there's a, there's a lockdown on travel between the two places. And number two uh, was that uh, it, it would have been for me to get them only for her, I would have to spend a lot of time trying to get them individually. And like I said, some companies don't even make it in, 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 in retail. They have to sell in live in bulk. So I think I've, I hope I've explained that. If you are interested, we can start the program uh, for the first, like I said, you have a half, half off consultation. We'll sit down with you for 30 minutes to, to an hour. And we can answer your questions, explain it, show you videos, even direct you to other parents who are on the program and who have had received tremendous benefits. The problem with parents is that they don't want to go on camera. They don't want to, I, I managed to, to arm twist one or two parents and they went on camera and they don't want to do it again. So I recorded one of the videos it's on our website as well. So that is uh, our offer for now. Uh, like I said, for those of you on the call, you can have a half off for our consultation. Um, any questions at this point? Okay, let me just quickly say this. So um, when it comes to, to problems affecting the brain, I listed about six things here. And again, we shall probably talk about them later on. Well, number three really is what we've been talking about, the bugs that uh, are affecting the brain. Sometimes it's the chemicals they produce, sometimes it's the toxins they produce. Some of them have spores. But the, you gotta start with the basic things, start cleaning them out. You know that heavy metals, number five here, heavy metals like mercury and lead can also cause speech problems, can also cause behavioral problems, can also cause cognitive problems. And it seems like that mercury and candida specifically, candida feeds on mercury to some extent. 
and needs and it likes to live on mercury. And so like so candida multiplies when there's a lot of mercury. And maybe you've heard about mercury, certain kinds of drugs and vaccines, some of them are not an anti-vaxxer, please don't get me wrong, but I have to speak in terms of, I have to say, um, give you the complete information. So certain chemicals, certain heavy metals can propagate the multiplication of certain bacteria and fungi like candida. That's part of what we do. We address heavy metals as well. So our program is a complete program that goes throughout all the different areas and addresses that. Okay, so let's, let's look at what we have learned so far. We've talked about microbes. We've talked about a fecal microbiota transfer trial and some of the groundbreaking results that we've seen from it and how we've applied some of those principles to our practice. I didn't mention number five, so I'm going to be mention that. What makes a healthy microbiome? How do you know your microbiome is healthy? Well, one, you got to have diversity. So I'm, uh, we showed you some of the bacteria that are missing, some that are in abundance, overabundance. The ideal gut is that you should have 85% good, 15% bad. 85% of the good bacteria that help in metabolism, that help in growth, that help in the immune system, and so on and so forth. 15% bad. The E. coli, the candida, and so on and so forth. Many times in children with autism, that balance is certainly not there. It's probably like 50-50 or even less of the good than the bad. Um, you also have to have certain, I've said this already, but you also have to have good amounts of, this, of the good bacteria in, in there. So that's what makes for a healthy microbiome. Lots of good, few, fewer of the bad. And that's what we're trying to do with the whole cleanse, pushing out all the bad and putting in the good stuff. Um, okay, different person, but okay, there you go. So that's kind of like, helps. I think we've kind of like run through that. The most, like I said, the most important thing is for you to get your, your, your bugs in place. So with that, I will yield to Asma. Thank you so much, Dr. Bayer. As usual, you always see so much in so little time, but always deep and impactful. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. So we have some questions. Zara is asking, does the child need to be on a specific diet during or after the treatment? The truth is we don't emphasize that because I want the parents to focus on one thing, figure out a way to get those things in the child's mouth. And that is not as easy as it sounds. It's very difficult. So parents have to figure out different ways. So if it means putting it in something that they like, but it's not good for them, but if that's the only way, by all means, they, they, they put it there. So I, I don't, I'm focused on getting and playing the gut, not at this time on specific kinds of foods, because it's enough trouble just getting them to use the, this the medication, the supplements we give them. Yeah, probably she also like, was, I remember I had that question too, whether I should also consider casein-free, um, gluten-free. And I, I actually got the answer for myself because if the, if the like you said, the land, if the, if, the, if the gut is not clean, they can't even absorb what you're giving them. Even though it's gluten-free, they can't absorb the nutrients. So I just thought um, I'd rather start with cleaning it out. It's just like getting expensive furniture <laughs> but the house is dirty. So I really love that analogy and I'm going to use it all over the place in, in different ways because it really makes sense to me. Okay, so for how long will the child be on the treatment? Okay. Standard treatment, let me just say this now. If you're treating a child with autism, we're talking about at least a, a year and a half. Um, what I try to focus on, again, because we're in Nigeria, we have to hit bum, 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 and many of them they, they are lost to follow up. So I say for six months, give me six months of your time. And as you said, we'll hold your hand, we'll create videos, I'll send you to other parents who will give you the support. So okay. six months, let's be on this. And then henceforth, you can now decide whether or not you want to continue. So six months is our, our focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these, I think most protocols would say first six months, let's see. And yeah, just so that makes sense. Um, so where does testing fit in the treatment uh, approach? 
Um, and that's a quite great question. Um, like as I said in the beginning, we at the Brain and Body Foundation, we're working from a, from a perspective that these things, we're dealing with the lowest common denominator, what is available in the context of Nigeria. So when it comes to testing, testing I tried it. Right? And you would take blood samples and send them to South Africa. It would take a long time. By the time it came back, it didn't really affect our treatment much. And so, the, and that's what the people who could afford the testing. So after a while, I was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. When these people parents I end up spending money, in my opinion, wasting money, where they could have put that money towards cleansing their gut, which is, in my opinion, is the most important thing. Yeah. So, um, for, so for people in the UK, Dubai, US, and they want to do testing, I say, by all means, go ahead and do your testing. Uh, but it doesn't affect my treatment. What's my testing is what are the parents telling me? What are they observing? Let's find out. Let's look at the child. Is there any improvement? Is there no improvement? What are you seeing? And we address as we go along. Again, that's why I use supplements and I don't use medication. Because test, because if you are using medication, you have to be super, super careful about the dosage and you want to avoid side effects. But from our experience, it's almost not. Um, I mean, people, there, there will be some, you, I'll be quite frank with you, sometimes when you're getting rid of bugs, the bugs will make a lot of noise. It's like you're driving out, you're casting out. Wow. So there might be some increased transient, maybe hyperactivity or aggression, whatever it is, but that's because they're, they're, they're rebelling to the process. But if you stick with it, you will find out it's transient and that passes. And then you will see some improvements. I, and I, we've seen that over and over again. Mm -hmm. So testing, for those who want to do it, I, I don't push it. To be honest, even I, uh, I'm here, but I wouldn't do that testing again. When my son was six, I waited for, uh, you know, for his hair to grow for like two months so that I could do the uh, heavy metal testing and he was sleeping. I stripped a part of it, put it, you know, did all the lab thing and sent it to the US. But at the end of the day, I still did not do the protocol again because I didn't understand what they were trying to do. Now they say we need to do chelation, we need to do this, you need to do, eat a lot of cucumbers and flush things out. I didn't know how that process that So I'm the sort of person that if I don't understand a process, I don't put my all in all into it. And I think this is human nature, right? Because what, 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 what motivates us at the end of the day? The understanding that we have a goal to reach, but we need to understand the journey through right. which that, that goal is achieved. So that's really, for me, I would not do testing. I, I can't wait to go for it, to be honest. <laughs> You know, I so, you know, when I keep telling my husband, when is the, when are the courts going to, when are the, he keeps saying, so um, he, he's, he's wondering because he's never seen me so adamant about specific supplements. And you're in Dubai, you want supplements from Nigeria. What is happening? You know, it's just because now I understand, oh, so this is what the information I've been missing all along. Because you know that what loads of them, they get expired, I never use them. Because I'm wondering, why should I give him GABA today, this tomorrow, that? And when he does some, you know, some behaviors, I'm thinking, like I always say to his teachers, I don't, when we, when they say he needs to see an occupational therapist, I, I tell them, you know, I know you're professionals, but as a mother, I feel there's more to it. I think there's something physiological happening in my child's body. It's more to, it has more to do with either his tummy or his brain than it has to do with just you know, external environment, how he perceives things. So really, I really urge a lot of parents to, to, to start this. And I promise to like be the first person to give my testimonial. Besides, I love giving testimonials. I don't know why, but I just I need to share this success story. So um, I do promise to do that. Um, what kind of diet is appropriate for the child? I think we've spoken about that, right, Dr. Dyer? Yeah, so let's just do the main thing. Zara is asking again, are there, okay. Okay, I went back. Kike Lomo is asking, can you give a guide of the cost implications for this treatment? Yes. Um, on average, and there'll be some variations here and there, on average per month, we're looking at, now let me quickly say this to if the child is less than six months, is going to be looking at about $500 a month the child's above six months, I'm sorry, I meant six years. 
So it's about $500 a month. Above that, it increases. Uh, of course, it is above 10 and, and all that. The, the dose and the amount just have to increase. And it, uh, you, might, you might have to bring in some other things. So it's above, if it's less than six years, six years and below is about $500. Oh, it can go up to about $1,000 a month or more. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I always try to point people one, when people say, oh, that's too much. In the US here, a doctor who treats autism, just for consultation, they charge $500. And then the testings, of course, they will not let you go anywhere without doing a test because, of course, doctors, they have to watch their backs. They have to make sure that they do everything according to. So, so they will not uh, treat you without a test. And that's cost. That goes into the hundreds as well. Mm-hmm. And um, the medications, again, go into the hundreds as well. So it is, it is a fraction, really, if you come to think about it. And if you think about it long term, if you don't start your child as soon as possible, the, the compounding effects of their costs can be astronomical. So mm-hmm. you have to, and I have to think about having a, 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 a shadow a, a teacher to help out to, to, mm-hmm. to, to watch your child, you have to carry your child and uh, you have to pay for other tests, to get the specific, special diets, the other things increase. But if you deal with this effectively now, if you commit to six months, you will find that you will save yourself a lot of money and a world of hurt. You know, that was the, sorry, sorry. That was even the point I was trying to, 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 to get that, to, to say, I mean, all the therapies we are paying for, we are paying an arm and a leg. And if the child can actually come down to a certain level, you know, certain, there's a certain percentage of therapies they don't need. If yeah. your child doesn't need um, 20 hours or 40 hours of ABA a week because he's more calm, he's calmer, why give it to him? So why not use that money and start getting him into maybe thinking of mainstream school or some sports activities instead of, because we're paying so much just to calm him down. And even that was when, when my, when his doctor said, I think you need to put him under medication during the pandemic because he got very anxious, even though it was against my will, but I knew better than to resist because he was really, really aggressive. Um, so for, for me, most of the time, uh, like what would, even the therapies or sometimes the medication with all due respect to psychiatrists, I know, I mean, this is, they're, they're doing with all good intention, but in most, it's mostly a band-aid. For me, it's just a band-aid. Even the therapies don't really work unless the child is on, on, you know, sometimes on medication. And that's also just temporary. Like uh, even when he resumed school, somebody, one of his teachers said, I hope he's still on medication. I said, well, is it the medication that's working now or the therapies? How would I know your therapies are working? So I can just imagine if I could just take a calm child to school and he's going, just going to get the best use of the money we're spending there. So yeah, I mean, the sooner we start, the better we can cut down on expenses mm-hmm. and this is the main thing parents are always crying about it's too expensive the therapies are so like, what if we don't have to put in all those therapies you know and right. we would have to if we, if we could get yeah, it I've, more grounded yeah I've, I've had parents who are or they take the child for music lessons because it's safe and help without the autism or horse riding swimming lessons and all those things because it can help with autism but when it comes to doing this mm. after it's too much money and i'm like you know what, you, you can, I mean, you can skip a few piano lessons yeah. for the sake of doing this. Yeah. Let's focus. Yeah. Because here's yeah. the thing, all these other tests, I mean, all these other therapies that the people are doing, and I'm speaking from experience now, those bugs are just there. If you don't take care of the gut, you know, not push out them, get those bugs out, they're just going to sit in there and laugh. You know what I'm saying? I'm being a little facetious now. Yeah. But uh, yeah. they just go in there, no matter what else you do, and it may help. Of course yeah. it helps to a certain degree. But it's like putting in a hundred dollars of work for getting five dollars of uh, rewards when you can focus on this main yeah. thing, get it out, yeah. and you find that the therapist will work a lot better. Yeah. better. Yeah, it's true. Um, SA somebody is asking, is this research specific for just those of the spectrum? Yeah, I had that question too. What could go wrong? What could go wrong with uh, if you do it with others, maybe? I must understand what, what she means by that. Is, it, is this research specific for just those? Research? What does she mean by research? Um, this research you, you, you just shared, as in the microbiome and all that. So is it just, um, so I, I think the protocol, more maybe the, uh, the protocol, 
Is the protocol only for children on the spectrum? No, it's, it's not. It's, it's going to be for for um, the child for children with neurodevelopmental disorders. There's always the gut component, so I would recommend that for every, for everybody. It's just much more important for children with good autism. Mm, mm. Yeah, I've seen that it's also for um, you. You do some protocol for sickle cell children with sickle cell. Yeah, so it's mm. quite good. Yeah. Anything Down you... syndrome, sickle cell disease, cerebral palsy, uh, What are the risks of the FMT if donors are well screened? But I think you, you've already said we should, it's not something we should do. This, this, is, this was just a study, right? It's not something that's done every day. Yeah. Well, there, there are doctors who are doing it. Um, I understand in Mexico and so I think this is some, some in the UK as well. Yeah. So um, all, I'm, all I'm saying, I wouldn't know how to screen the doctors. I mean, they probably would need social proof. Maybe a lot of our, other parents have gone to them and they've gotten good results and all that. So mm -hmm. maybe that, but I wouldn't know how to screen them. Okay, okay. So you're still asking who fits into this study? I don't know, maybe doctor knows who fits into this study. Study of what exactly? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Who fits into this this study of the FMT? I think he's really interested in the F FMT thing. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that was just a so I think so. Dr. Dyer was sharing those slides and those research so that it could lead him to what he was about to say. So alternatively, this is how you could do it. You don't have to do it the fecal way of you know taking somebody's pieces and cleaning it up and put it into somebody's body, right? This is a better way of doing it and it's, it's, it's a more functional way. But I think, are there, are there any risks of this particular treatment? What treatment exactly is there? Um, the treatment, the protocol from Dr. Dio, could you answer please? Ah, okay, are there any risks? Right, so nothing is 100%. I wouldn't be, if any doctor says that there are no risks, obviously not. Um, then he probably isn't a trained doctor. Everything has a risk, even drinking water has a risk. Um, but in my opinion, this is the, has the least risks uh, possible. Th there are challenges because, I mean, there are about five or six different things that we give or for to, to achieve what I've tried to talk about. And um, sometimes there might be a challenge in getting your kid to, uh, to take, take them. A kid may, your kid may not like the taste. For some reason, the kid may be sensitive to a component of the, the nutrients. There are people who are allergic to, I started getting allergic to avocados at one point in time. Mm. I mean, think about it, avocado is the only healthiest food you can put in your body. I started getting allergic to them at some point in time. So uh, yeah, all, all I can say is that we, we, we have tried to minimize the risks as much as possible. So, but if you, had, you you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't do anything if you if if, if uh, the risks yeah and like ev yeah. everything has risks even some of the foods we eat like you just give an example of avocado and I'm sure most of all the things you're using they're, they're nothing is synthetics they're all natural right correct uh -huh. so yeah yeah go ahead please. um so we use uh. In some of our things, we use vitamin C. So I, I wouldn't say natural, natural meaning that you just pluck the, the herb and you preserve the herb in a, in a glass of water in a, in a bottle and somehow you preserve the, uh, the way The way things are done these days is that, especially when it comes to nutraceuticals, which are supplements that are highly concentrated, there's, there is some technology involved in it that would take away that natural aspect. Some of them need to be preserved. So there's going to be some kind of chemical or, or additive that makes sure that when you're transferring things from the US to Nigeria, for instance, it doesn't get spot in the process. So I hesitate to say they're all natural, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but, but they, um, they are as close to natural as, uh, as, as they can be. Okay, and the additives and the preservatives, that's always where, especially uh, as parents of children with autism are worried. 
Um, so what would they be like? Are they things that are being taken into consideration that they could cause some sensitivities and even make it worse sometimes and you wouldn't even know what's causing it? Correct. So um, I, I, I probably use the word additive uh, wrongly. I'm, uh, I'm referring more to the chemical process by which you could, they used to concentrate the supplements and also to keep them from getting spots. So we're not talking about preservatives like benzene or um, the phenols and other, other things like that. We're just talking about the, I was just trying to answer the question more completely that it's not completely natural in that it's not herbs or, or, or plants that you just take and put in the bottle. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so additives is probably the wrong one. I think preservatives is probably the wrong one. Yeah, I mean, it could be because since we have natural preservatives, even when you go to organic shops here, they say this is, um, these are natural, but you read the back and you see preservatives. Like I used to go to, to shops when I was really into my son's diet, you know, with my Google open, and, you know, Googling different E, E5 this, E5 that, and that was when I realized that there are natural preservatives that you could use. So as, and I'm sure probably most of the ones you're using or even all uh, use with caution since you're, you know you uh, you know the target uh, uh, patients you you know the patients you're trying to target so obviously you're not going to use anything that's going to jeopardize the um, health of, of the child or even the journey to him you know get him better so, and and nothing is hundred percent like I said so mm -hmm. for, my, yeah. for my experience most times the kids are able to uh, to, to take him. But there are some kids who absolutely will not take them. Mm -hmm. Some say, no, we can't do it, we can't do it anymore. So we have to modify, we have to pivot along the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for example, if you send a powder or, a or some tablets and the child can't take it, then maybe, well, if it's ta tablets, probably you can ask us to crush it and use it, not something, something that you, you could give us that guidance. But if it's, um, I don't know, what, what is it? If it's just something to soak in water and drink, I mean, our kids are very choosy. But I think at this stage, we'll just say, we'll just cross the bridge as it comes. Like immediately I knew you were, I was going to start your protocol as soon as I could. I got him to start taking um, um, tablets. So I started with the gels, the soft mm -hmm. ones. So I started, so I used this, this we, we did it with this therapist and we just, just did sort of a behavioral thing for him whereby we arranged different things and we asked them to swallow one and it was it, it worked beautifully within a week so all I want to say to the parents here is that if your why is strong you'll find a way to get it if somebody comes and says to you that if you don't do this to your child in two years time he won't even be able to say one word you'll find a way so I always feel we become a bit you know uh, you know a bit complacent when we start a protocol and say oh it's not going to work because we feel, well, um, I, I might just take my time. But if you feel what you're looking for is very, very strong, you'll go for it. You'll definitely go for it. I mean, there are patients that are maybe terminally ill. They would say they're terminally ill, but if they do start a protocol, I'm not talking about a diet protocol now, but things work because even the things they never thought they would take, they take it. So I don't want to start thinking over oh, what if, let's think of, it's not about if it can be done, let's think of how can we get it done. And that has been my approach with my son because I, I learned the hard way. So I'll go to the doctor's office and I'll, and everything he says, I'll say, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. <laughs> but that was because I was suffering. So our words are a reflection of what we're feeling inside. And later on, I realized I was just, you know, I'm bottling all my frustrations on these poor doctors when they were trying to help my son and thinking, no, come on, you don't even understand. And he says, let's just try it. And I'll say, because, well, that's because it's not your son. You know? <laughs> well, I had to tell myself the truth one day because I realized my son is not getting better. He has all the resources around him. So what is the problem? Me. I'm the only common factor among, amongst all these things. So sometimes you have to be objective and really understand Maybe it's not even the school that, you know, maybe therapies are not working, the doctors are not giving the right supplements. How are you administering it? And are you doing it the right way? Or are you giving up halfway? This is so important. And with all the things doctor has said, I mean, these are, these are webinars he should charge for because he's given us all the information without holding back anything. So um, with this free information, I mean, uh, 
they always say knowledge is power, right? Since that we were little, these were like good sayings, we always say it on stage. But I feel it's not power without action. So it's not about just listening in and then logging up and say, oh yeah, that was a good seminar. Like I always used to ask on the platform, oh, who enjoyed the webinar? But I don't do it anymore. I, I, I don't need you to enjoy it. <laughs> I just need you to take action. And I'm not saying this because Dr. Dai is going to give me a commission. <laughs> Everybody knows it's because I just feel, let's do this. And so that we can focus on other parts of our lives. You know, I left my IT career simply because of my son, because I just couldn't see myself coming home at six o'clock and then where would he be? And thinking I'm this, yeah, this one of the best IT uh, personnel in, in the world. And then I have a child that's hitting and getting aggressive at 30. And what if you could actually achieve your life's purpose because your child has been taken care of, but it goes with taking a lot of action like this. Even when I do other webinars, I ask them, what are you going to do before next week? Um, for me, the preparation isn't, isn't something, but taking an hour or an hour and a half from our time to come on this and you not taking action, at least send Dr. Dyer a message. Ask him more. He'll always reply. Dr. Dyer, please, can you uh, drop your email, the, the one that you need there? So as he's doing that, anybody um, wants to type something she learned from here that she didn't know before, and we'll round this up in less than two minutes. What have you learned from this and how do you intend to take it up, to take it forward? What action do you intend to take? So many actions you could take. I've taken my action already anyway. So um, Aspa, speaking of, I, I forgot to mention this one. So I, mm -hmm. should I mention the one about the probiotics, about the bulk? Yeah, yeah, please, yeah. yeah. Let's reiterate it one. Okay, so I had mentioned earlier that it took us a while to find the right uh, bottles of probiotics, and eventually we got. I was mentioning at the beginning to uh, it was a trip to Seattle that I found that I found the right combination. So what the we sell them at our clinic for about seventy or eighty dollars a bottle. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much it is now, but about but between that amount. Um, a child, we found out that the sweet, sweet spot is about four bottles a month. And this, we, we started to institute this after we've done the cleanse, this special probiotics, four bottles a month. It's about $70 to $80 a bottle. I know it's expensive, but I trust me, it works really well. Uh, the company does not sell for less, fewer than 250 bottles at any go. So what I mentioned to Asma was that if people want to um, invest in it, and we can... Instead of selling at $70, $80, you can sell at $50 a bottle. So if you want to get four, you pay about, I guess, $200. If you want to get $10,000, my math is right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, 10 would be 10, no, 20 would be $1,000. If we can get enough people who want to buy that at this point, then we can, we can, um, we can get it from the company. You can buy all, all 250, 250 bottles. Now we can send you the ones that you've ordered. Um, I, I mentioned too that if we can get at least uh, 100 bottles, if you can pay for 100 bottles, I will put in the rest of the money so we can release it from the company. So if you, 100 bottles would be about $5,000, right? $5,000. So I'll put in the rest of the money to get it out of there and then. We will now ship it to you wherever you want. But I, I, that's probably one of the best things you can put in your child's body, whether or not you put I mean, I would strongly recommend the cleanse first. But if you if you're just probiotics, um, if, I don't want people going to the shops and just buying probiotics. Most of them simply don't work. Yeah. It's the best. Trust me. Yeah. 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 And um, so the probiotics is just a part of the protocol, right? So for each person that reaches out to you, then you could... Uh, form their protocol accordingly. But the probiotic is just so that you can get everything in bulk and you know, send it to them. Because that right. everybody has to go through that part of the protocol anyway, right? Right, strongly recommended. Mm. Okay, all right. So Dr. Dyer, thank you so much for coming on again. It's been an hour plus of um, this uh, webinar. Thank you everyone for coming on. And I urge all of you to reach out to him, even for more information for inquiry, even if you're not ready now, you'll be ready one day. And why not? You should be ready now. 
I mean, start somewhere. I mean, he's not saying you have to do the whole six months or a year plus. At least reach out to him. And when you do reach out with his paid um, consultation services, you could get to find out more. I mean, even find out what is the roadmap for your child. I mean, having the, the plan in place, then, I mean, these out, uh, if, if you have a, out, an outcome for your child, you have to know how you're going to get through to reach the outcome. So I feel the first way is to set a plan and you can't set that plan alone. So reaching out to him or I mean during the consultation, then you can set it's five forty-five minutes consultation, is it? Or an yes. hour? Yes. 45. 45 minutes. Okay. And then that's when he gets to ask you deep questions about your child. And then you can take it up from there. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming on and Good morning, have a good morning or good afternoon, uh, Dr. Dio and those in Seattle and other parts of America. Thank you so much for those. And I'm not sure if there's anyone from UAE here. We're all getting ready to break our fasts. Uh, in Nigeria, it's 3.20. Thank you so much for coming and have a good evening. Dr. Dio, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Take care. Take care.